Lieutenant Doton is actually giving a quick briefing to the crowd as to what's going to go on, talking about the tools, um, different aspects of how they're going to pop the door, how they're going to cut the door, how they're going to actually push the seat back. Um, we have the opportunity, um, Everett's Auto Parts has been very good to us over the years to give us some different vehicles to be able to actually operate the different whenever we want. We do Squad A and Ladder 1 at least a couple of times a year. We'll end up going up to um, Everett's Auto Parts and actually cut cars up, move cars. We put dummies in them um, to be able to uh, work around it like there would be a normal patient in there. As you can see now, Lieutenant Doton is going to talk about spreaders versus cutters, different tools that can do actually different things in regards to cutting a door, cutting an A post, cutting a B post, um, the technology in vehicles now versus, you know, <laughs> I want to say even five years ago, for crying out loud, we, we, have, we have cars now that are actually driving themselves, um, which is a whole different world compared to 20 years ago when I got on the job. Um, but one of the big deals is actually the protection in cars, the seat belts, different things. And we have to be very careful where we cut, where we pry, where we push and do different things just simply because we could actually injure the patient that's in the car. We could actually injure the firefighters that are working on the patients and the ones that are actually attempting to do the actual extrication. So there are definitely a, a number of different aspects that as the motor vehicles change, we have to change with them. So we constantly, we'll have representatives from car manufacturers come in and talk to us, talk to the training division, the training division will be able to put out some information on some new equipment, airbags. Um, you know, just years ago they had stuff where we have a car fire and the bumper could come off because the you'd get the liquid that was the shock absorber for that bumper would boil and blow the front of the thing off. So we had to be very careful in front of the cars. They've kind of discontinued a lot of that stuff now. We really don't have to worry about that except in some older models. But as, as the uh, technology changes in cars and how the technology changes basically in everything we do in the fire service, I feel sometimes, especially as of late, we have to be able to adapt with that. And that comes down to good training, understanding what our limitations are, buying new tools. We've just, we've, we're always purchasing, trying to purchase new equipment to be able to actually operate at any incident to be able to keep, you know, residents of the city and people passing through the city safe. So it looks like now we're going to start the tools up. They're going to, they're going to um, actually um, flatten the tires so it's easier now for them to be able to work on a stable platform. They can actually go and you see uh, firefighter Nickerson there actually pulling, pulling the stem, pulling the stem right out so that he doesn't have to actually take a knife to it. They'll chalk the wheels now, make sure it stays stable, it doesn't go anywhere. Um, as you notice, they have a donut on that front tire, so this car probably had some problems even before it was brought to the junkyard. Um, they're going to crib the sides. You see this step cribbing. You can see uh, Firefighter Campbell now putting underneath. That's basically with the chocks are stabilizing it um, front to back and um, that step cribbing will stabilize it laterally. Um, one of the things that guys are able to set these things up now, sometimes this is, happens obviously at a scene a heck of a lot quicker. Um, and they have to go to work. We don't always get to crib exactly where we want, when we want, um, but cribbing is a lot of times the safest way to do things for us so that we can then operate the tools in the manner we want to operate them. Uh, I see Firefighter Nickerson there just breaking that glass. That's something that normally we'd want to do um, before we start operating the tool because then when they break the glass in that fashion with a hole punch or with a halligan you see Campbell doing on the other side. One of the things we can do is we can control it when we when we <clears throat> when we do it in an accident scene if we just break it and smash it in or we try to pop it with the tool when we really can't control where that glass is going to go and we don't you know do no harm is a better idea and we don't want to make sure that we don't um, actually um, injure the patient more than we need to um, and we'll put a sheet over the patient protect them from any glass flying flying um, flying metal and such. Um, you see right now they're just trying to get a purchase point in that door. Firefighter Nickerson has um, the Halligan bar, which is a, used mainly for forcible entry in a number of different applications. The firefighter Nickerson has Halligan bar and he's trying to find a purchase point. So you can see Firefighter Campbell now comes over with the, um, with the actual um, spreaders and now he'll be able to spread the door. He can spread the window. Um, as he now you'll notice as he spreads that window up you're going to see the purchase point on the bottom of the door get bigger Jay and that's kind of what we're looking for. Unfortunately this is sometimes scary for the occupant of the vehicle but you have to keep in mind 
that when we're doing this, we want to keep them calm, but their physical well-being is, is paramount. And sometimes things we do aren't the, to see them when we're doing them, aren't the nicest things, but we, we, are, we are trying to get our job done. Um, right now, that made that purchase point a little bit bigger. Firefighter Campbell will be able to get in there and now pry this door open. As technology, you know, this obviously isn't your, 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 your father's Buick. Um, as technology gets more and more, these cars become lighter and lighter. And the skins they put on the outsides of these cars sometimes peel apart. They delaminate from one another. So we have to be very careful. We always, one of the things in extrication we always talk about is little bites. Little bites into the door, little bites to, we don't just try to sprint it all at once because we'll, we can basically pull the door apart and then we have nothing to work with. So you'll notice Firefighter Campbell will put it in, take a little bite, back it out, going a little further, another little bite, back it out, a little bit further. Um, so he'll go up, grab the top. One of the hardest parts you'll find on these cars, all these hinges are reinforced steel. So as he tries to get in, we want to try to stay away from the hinges. We want to use the hinges as something that helps us rather than hurts us. So we'll go to the locking me mechanism, pop the locking mechanism at the front of the door on the what's called the A post that comes down from the front window. That's, um, that's actually a hinge and that's case hardened steel. It's very hard to cut through those. Although we can do it, it just, it would make the, um, the process a little bit more labor intense. Jay, if, I'm not sure if you can get a picture of that now, but you can see how that door actually somewhat delaminated from the front piece. These are all spot welds that hold these doors in place now. The actual inner structure of the door is what's gonna protect the actual occupant, but we have to be very careful that when we're actually cutting it, we don't delaminate it to the point where we don't have any purchase points to get it open. Right now, they'll work on and get the hinge. They're gonna pop it. They'll pop the spots out and have the hinge come apart instead of actually trying to cut the case hardened steel of that hinge. He's cutting the metal right now. Firefighter Murphy is cutting the metal actually behind the hinge to try to get it off cut the screws out instead of trying to cut the hinge. Come over, they're going to cut the other door on the other side. Again, just like before, they're going to get a purchase point. Pop the door, get a purchase point. He'll bend that now. Remember, although these tools can get into a lot of spots, one of the hard parts is they're a little blunt on the front, so we have to use other hand tools to be able to get in there to be able to pop it. Firefighter Morrison, who's actually in charge of Squad A today, he's going to take the tool now and he'll actually see he actually uses it to actually almost like a pair of tweezers, bends a piece of that metal back. Um, these tools are quite extensive. You know, you got to remember we're working on a car that's upright, that there is not any damage done to the vehicle. Um, when we have damage done to the vehicle and now we actually have to go in from different angles and cut from different ways, part of the structure has already been broken down. It actually is much more difficult than what you're seeing with these guys. These guys could fly through this car and get it in about a hundred pieces right now for you. Um, we're trying to make sure that the people can kind of see what we're doing, how we're doing it, so they're going a little bit, little bit, little bit slower than they normally would. Uh, if you notice, there, is, there you see the door coming apart again. That's another problem we always have with these. Um, and so you'll notice Firefighter Morrison is going to go up where he has more of a stable platform and can actually spread the door so it actually pops off of the lock and the latching mechanism. There we are. So now he popped it open. Sometimes, you know, the littlest things, the smallest little amount sometimes is all we need to actually get a person out. Um, just being able to move a quarter of an inch, that door move the actual um, seat a quarter of an inch is sometimes all we need to actually get a person out. Um, simple things like we have a, a cutting, a manual cutting tool. We, it's basically just it's a hand pump hydraulic tool. We call it a brake pedal cutter because a lot of times people's feet get tangled around their brake pedal, get tangled around their gas pedal. A lot of times all we need is to go in and be able to cut the brake pedal and pull them out. Notice right there, he didn't really attack the hinges. He actually attacked around the hinges to have the screws pop off. They're gonna now, now if you notice the difference, they have complete access to try to pop the back doors where before it was 
they had to make a purchase point, get in there, and now they'll be able to just, oh, they're going to actually pop it from the back. So they'll make it a little more difficult for themselves. Easiest way possibly, too, is they can go right at that hinge size, pop around the hinge, and get it off. They're just going to do this for a little bit more of a demonstration to actually be able to open the back, get a purchase point, and pop the latch off. So one of the big things we're very concerned about, if you notice the posts going up, the front posts, the, median, the, the uh, midline posts there, what we call the A and the B posts, a lot of times the airbags are in those. And we have to be very careful. A lot of times those things will even contain, will contain a charge even after we disconnect the battery. We disconnect the battery in most accidents just for transport. It's a, you know, you gotta remember it is a, um, it's a point of combustion if we have gasoline leaking. If there is a spark, we could actually have a problem with those batteries. So a lot of times we'll disconnect the battery. The batteries are always disconnected at the junkyard, so we don't have to worry about that today. But normally we do that because when we're popping and moving and, and, and prying doors open, if we set off the airbag, airbags have been known to bounce, you know, come out and actually kill firefighters. So I think it's important to understand that. We've seen some pretty bad videos over the years of people actually getting, firefighters actually getting struck by airbags. Um, so we really have to, we sometimes we'll reach in and pull apart the inner plastic of the door to kind of look to see, okay, the airbag's here. A lot of times it is labeled, but you can't always, um, can't always, be completely sure with that so we'll look and we'll pull the plastic off the door and actually take a look and see that see where the actual airbag is and so we can avoid it while we're actually cutting the car sometimes just put a little pressure on you see firefighter Campbell there actually holding the door down moving it to allow him to probably pop it off um, the other thing is if that door swings around and we have an occupant in that front seat we could actually injure them worse than they already are so as you can see, if you you know you look at the, it's a coordinated effort between everybody. It's not one person doing one thing. See Jeff Morrison, the taller gentleman there. He's in charge of the truck today. He he took a whack at the door earlier, but his main job is to really supervise what's going on, um, not to initially really get involved. So he'll supervise. Today this is just a demonstration, so he's going to get involved, give the guys a break. But normally, if you go to a scene of an accident, the company officer, the senior man, whoever it may be, he's really going to stand back. He's going to supervise the operation and not get hands-on involved. Um, the reason for that is he can stand back and kind of see the big picture. You know, he might, he's going to be communicating with the EMS personnel that are taking care of the patient. He's going to be communicating with the members of his crew. He's going to be, he's going to be communicating with um, myself as the deputy chief if I arrive on scene because we go to most extrication calls. Um, what he needs, what he doesn't need, um, if he's going to need more resources, if he's going to need more medical care on, on the patient. Not everybody can be a worker bee. Sometimes you need people in there actually making decisions, and a lot of times that's what comes down to um, the company officer as well as the senior man. Again, they're gonna get a little purchase point, kind of pop the door, just kind of give the demonstration of how they pop the door, how that works. Um, when I say pop the door, I'm saying prying. I mean by prying it open. We, we use a lot of slang terms in the fire service and call the ladder the stick, and sometimes go. We say, okay, throw the stick to the roof, and they're like, what are you throwing a stick on the roof for? Um, a lot of times there's different slang terms we use that the general public doesn't, doesn't, doesn't really maybe understand, so I apologize for any slang terms I use. Um, it's gonna pull it back, again, use it as like a, like a pair of tweezers, get in there. This is a tough one because this, it really is a big gap in there, and that's kind of hard on a back door. Usually the back door will lay over the back frame, and it's kind of tough to get in there. So this is a little, this is a tougher spot um, getting on this one uh, for Firefighter Costa right now than, than the other ones. Um, if you notice, uh, Team Man Morrison right now is talking about how they're gonna pop the door. Once they get the doors off, they're actually gonna take the roof off. Sometimes we take the roof off. Sometimes, a lot of times, we'll take the whole roof off. Um, other times, um, we might just bend it right back. So. Jeffrey, I'm gonna go up top a little higher. So Firefighter Morrison's gonna go in, he kinda saw a spot where he can get a little higher on that, and he's gonna actually go in and pry that door from the top, give it a little bit more space. Once he gets a little bit more of a purchase point, he'll then be able to get the door open a lot easier. Although these tools are hydraulic and they work real well, you still have to put a little elbow grease into them. Um, and 
that's why physical fitness and firefighting and making sure you're in good shape and strong is so all so very important. I think one of the things we see, especially with new recruits, new firefighters, I don't think they realize the physicality. Um, I think everybody looks at it and they think it's just a natural job to be able to, you know, carry ladders, carry hoses, move ladders, move hoses, go in, fight fire. But you know, this you, know, you go obviously you see the gear these guys are wearing. You know, by, when they go into a fire, they're 75 pounds heavier than when they were wearing their station uniform prior to that. So. There is a lot of physicality to it. These guys, you know, just doing this stuff around here, that you can see them sweating just doing this. Um, simply because, um, simply because of the gear, simply because, you know, you remember, there's a lot of brain power going into this. They have to think about the best ways to get this person out. We have to think how we're gonna get them out in the quickest possible way to get them out, because that's what's gonna help them be able to get to the hospital quicker and be, have their medical problems taken care, care of sooner. So again, right here, he's popping this door. He's, he's gonna, he's gonna get it around the hinge. He's not, he's gonna try to stay away from the actual hinge itself, simply because the hinge again is case hardened steel, and it's very difficult to get it open around there. Jeffrey. They're gonna roll the roof back. They're gonna cut the A posts there, which are the two front posts. Um, more than likely, they'll cut the B posts as well. I'm not sure, probably more than likely, that's what they're gonna do. Then they'll crease the roof. And when they crease the roof, what that'll end up doing is being able, to, they can basically make a hatchback on the front end of this car. See uh, Firefighter Murphy with the big cutters. He'll cut that down nice and low. We try to cut them as low as we can. The higher we cut them, we end up with more problems when we're trying to take the person out. We don't want to get them out of the car and end up cutting them on the jagged edges that we've made. So we try to cut it down nice and low. We also, if the low we cut it, a lot of times we stay away from the um, side curtain airbags, which is a good thing because we don't want to um, make those come out and injure somebody that's actually trying to work on getting the person out. See Firefighter Campbell's going around and cutting the seat belts. One of the interesting things, a lot of times you go through all of this and you're cutting the roof off, you're doing this, you're making all these different cuts. Next thing you know, you go to pull the roof up and it's connected by a small piece of cotton that's holding <laughs> with the seat belt and that's about it. So um, make sure we get everything cut, everything away. Man, it, these, these operations are so manpower intensive. While this is going on, while this is going on, um, you know, you gotta remember we have another crew inside taking care of the patient. We have another crew stretching a hose line because we never know what could actually go on in regards to possibly a fire or anything like that. Ryan, why don't you guys increase it further back and pull it back? Increase it back here. Increase it back here. Good job, good job. right here. Yeah, crease it back further if you can. Then you'll be able to get a better lift on it. You don't have a lot of room to lift on it. You can worry about the racks. They can pop off. So they're gonna, they're now they're, you see them hammering away, they're going to crease the roof and be able to then pull it off. <laughs> One of the interesting things, you know, we can make this job as safe as we want, we can have all these tools, we can invent everything we need, but in the end this is a really a bulwark job. There's a lot of, you know, band knuckles, you know, just working away. It's not, um, it's not always the easiest job to do. Um, there's a ton of physicality that goes into it. So you see they're gonna actually um, cut a snip in the roof now. They've, they've bent the roof, but now they're actually gonna cut on the side of the roof that's actually going to make it a little bit easier for them to be able to bend and peel the roof back. Yeah. Cut each side, make it a little easier to bend. I know, I know you can. I didn't want to create more problems for you though. The roof rack, 
again, we're showing you multiple different evolutions we do. A lot of times it's just the smallest little thing by popping one door or sliding the seat back or, or lifting the dash up a little bit is really all you're going to need to actually get the job done with these. Um, we're just, in this video today, we're just showing you really a, a number of different ways. So now we just took this little Ford Taurus station wagon and made it into a uh, convertible. Um, they'll pull that right. They'll pull that right back. Get that roof back. You know, you got to remember. I think if if we're working on your on on your car to get you out of it, a lot of times um, you're not going to have much left of your car afterwards, unfortunately. All right. So they're making a cut. You'll be able to now. Um, make a cut in the actual bottom of the A post if you can see down with it you'd get in the car where that pedal is right around here Jay they've made a cut here now they're gonna make a cut in the actual fender we're gonna put a tool in that's gonna uh, kind of make it so it's a little bit easier and basically make the, the we call it the Sully tool because Kevin Sullivan one of our guys actually welded that together so he'll, they'll take and they'll put a ram now into one of those slots and you'll be able to actually push the dashboard up and out of the way. Again, a lot of times it's something very small. It's a little, it's a quick little movement that they got to make um, to get someone's leg out and it's entrapped. Um, obviously, we've been a little more extensive today just to kind of give the crowd a little bit of a show in regards to how we, the different tools we have and what we can operate. No, that's fine. Hey, Brian. The timing no, it's fine. I said just the line was uh, pressurized for a second. Okay, all right, okay. So it's all right? Yeah, oh yeah. All right. all right, so that's a ram you see Firefighter Nickerson has. Basically, its name comes from the fact that it actually rams things up and down. He'll now take and he'll put that in the slot and they'll be able to actually, with the cuts they've made to take tension off the steel, they'll actually be able to now move that dashboard out of the way and you'll see that dashboard lift. Sometimes different rams, you have different pieces of extension. Try it on the metal. Jeffrey, up on the steel. So he's gonna move it now. We got some movement with it on the plastic. Plastic just breaks away, unfortunately. So now we'll get it up on the steel and we'll get a lot bigger of a lift, a lot more of a lift out of it. One of the things we run into though is now once we get that moved, um, now we have that ram right in the way. So a lot of times we might have to take the person out the other side or once we get it up, we can actually stick a wedge in that, in that slice that we made on the bottom of the A-post. Now take the ram out, it'll hold that in place and um, we can slide the person out that side, depending. Sometimes we might take them right out through the top of the car as well if we've already got the roof off. That's a good lift. So they got a good lift out of that. They were able to actually move that dashboard up quite a bit. That would usually, hopefully, be plenty just to get them out. Um, years ago, we used to put chains across the uh, hood <laughs> into the steering wheel, and um, we'd use the jaws of life, which is a spreader, and pull them together, and would actually lift it, lift the steering wheel out that way. With the advent of the with the advent of the Rams, it's actually um, made our lives a lot easier. It's a lot less um, work in regards to set up, setting things up. So, which is good because that means you can get a person out of the car quicker and get them off to tertiary care and whatever would have a surgery or um, into a trauma center or whatever they need a lot sooner. Yeah, well, we made, we made the tires flat. We cut the roof off. Um, we disconnected the battery. So I don't really know if they could drive it out of here. I think we might need a tow truck to come and get it. What do you think? Yeah, you think so? Yeah, accidentally. Yeah, I don't think if the, even if they have the keys, I don't know if that car's gonna start. So obviously you can see here, um, we had a couple of bystanders that were commenting if they wanted to drive the vehicle or not away. So, but uh, as you can see here now, um, they 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 um, are now moving the dashboard up on this side. You know, this could be a passenger, it could be a driver, it could be you know anyone in the vehicle. Um, they'll move that dashboard up and away on this side as well. Jeff, that's good. We're good. 
Able to move up, get things out. Now they're just going to cut the rest of the roof off. Um, Back here, they're going to cut the back completely off now so the roof can be completely removed. Sometimes you have to see now, this is a big post. The other ones he was able to cut with one felt swoop, but th the throw of this actual cutting tool, he's going to actually have to cut it on both sides. One of the things you see these guys, they keep handing the tool back and forth. Everybody wants to get in and everybody wants to cut. I think one of the things sometimes is, you know, obviously they're exhausted after a while. You know, these tools are not like, you know, your hand tools you use at home. These are, you know, 40, 50, sometimes 70 pound tools. They're actually operating. They're manhandling these things all around to try to actually get them in the position to cut. Again, it goes back down to the, it goes back to the physicality of, um, of, of, of this job and what they have to do and how they're going to do it. Um, but I think he's probably gonna have to make another cut with this one as well because the tool won't go completely through. Once they make this cut, they'll be able to lift the whole entire roof right off. There we are. Easy to be removed. So again, we've done some obviously some extensive renovations to this car. Um, again, we went, you know, we moved a lot slower. Sure. Jeffrey, whatever you want to do. So we have other tools. You notice uh, Firefighter Morris is going over to one now. That's actually a battery operated um, tool. The reason we have that is because a lot of times these tools are very hard to get in 24, different places like that. You get someone down an embankment down a hill it might be difficult to get the actual tool down there. So these battery operated, these battery operated tools, you can just throw over your shoulder and carry them right down. They do actually work very well. Obviously they're not like operating a gas powered unit, but they will work. They do get the job done. Jeffrey. We go through this and cut so many different things. Um, sometimes getting just under the hood for a fire. Um, a lot of times the cable will have burned away to actually pop the hood from the interior like we normally, like we normally do, like we normally use. So that's actually being used, operate on a battery like you would have with your Milwaukee or um, Black & Decker or whatever at home. Um, just a battery, we, 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 we charge these, um, make sure they're charged and we can use this in a multi multitude of different ways. They're very versatile, they're very compact. You see how the power, it's actually bending that front frame and everything. Um, they're very powerful, they're, they're very easy to use. He can actually also use this as a cutter. So this is an all-in-one tool, battery operated, spreader cutter. What you saw earlier was a spreader and a cutter operating differently, um, operating separately from one another. And there's the inside. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> Who wants to donate their car next? <laughs>